Do you want to know how to make homemade bread? Do you want to know how to make easy bread? Do you know, want to know the secrets to artisan bread, all those beautiful loaves and bowls and flatbreads and all those gorgeous breads that you see all over Instagram and all over social media? Well, you are in the right place. I am super excited. Today we have guest Judith Fertig, who has written this amazingly new, wonderful book, Easy Bread. So y'all welcome so much. Thank you for coming today. My name is Virginia Willis. I'm a chef and cookbook author in Atlanta, Georgia. And every week at 1130 on Fridays, 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on Fridays, I host Cookbooks with Virginia. And on this show, we celebrate cookbook authors. So I'm a chef and cookbook author. I love cookbooks. I love cookbook authors. And we celebrate each and every week a different author. Sometimes there are new books like this one, like fresh hot off the press, fresh out of the oven. Sometimes we celebrate classics or just like old books that I happen to come across. So you name it. But this week, super, super excited. Longtime friend and colleague, and I just have immense respect for her, is Judith Fertig. So let's welcome Judith and her book, Easy Bread. Hey, Virginia. It's so great to see you again. Yay, I know. And I'm just so excited to get you on the show. We've got so many, I had so many, um, just so many uh, folks this year and it wanted to make certain to have you on. So I'm super excited and I just love your new book. Thank you. Thank you. So will you, now I know about you and I know about your history and your, your, your novels and your fiction and your cookbooks and stuff, but will you please tell um, the Cookbooks with Virginia viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. It all started in the little town of, you know, just, uh, <laughs> I grew up uh, outside of uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. I had, my mom was a great cook, uh, but when I went off to college, she discovered Julia Child on PBS. And I would go off to school and I had, you know, horrible minute steak and hard little peas and, you know, bad dorm food. I would come back home and my mom would be making beef bourguignon and béarnais sauce and chocolate mousse. And they had to drag me back to college. I didn't want to go. So, wow. <laughs> so I discovered kind of early, you know, the magic of food, the right ingredients, a little dry, dry white wine, a little really good cheese, herbs, you know, it, it could really transform food. So that's kind of, you know, the, the germ of how this got started. But I was the first person in my family on my dad's side of the family to go to college. So the thought of being a, an author of any kind was just like way out there. So I started off as a high school English teacher. So uh, I had all those surly teenage students at seven o'clock in the morning who didn't want to be in English class. So after that, you can you can do anything. You know, you could. Yes. Yeah. If you can make it in high school, if you can make it teaching high school, I think you could make it anywhere. Yeah. In New York City, right? Yeah. He's like, no problem. you know, you hit, you have the stare, you have the look that you give people that are misbehaving in the back row. So, you know, that always comes in handy. So uh, after that, I, I got married out of college and um, we our food budget was $30 a week uh, because I was, we were on a teacher's salary. Yep. But I somehow found time to make one Julia Child dish every week. So I kind of, you know, was, I wish there had been uh, blogging back then because I could have been Judith and Julia, but that was not true. <laughs> And I bet I would have liked you a lot more than that other girl. But that's another yeah. story for another day. <laughs> yeah, I, we I, got big, I got in big trouble writing a response to her uh, thing. I went to see that movie and it just pissed me off. So I like I like the idea of Judith and Julia. All right, so let me let me stop for a second. I got so excited, y'all, because we have a component to Cookbooks with Virginia, which is a free giveaway on Instagram, and we had some shipping snafus. So Judith is going to hold up the copy of the book. Yay! Look at that great. Look at that cover. It's such yeah. a great cover. Like, it's just art direction superb. So y'all yeah. go to my Instagram feed. You're going to like Virginia Willis. You're going to like Judith Fertig. If you like us already, that's great. Thank you for thank you for liking us. And if you don't like us yet, please follow us both. And we're going to run this contest all weekend. You can enter as many times as you want. All you got to do is tag a different friend each time limitless spend all day Saturday entering to win and you're going to win a copy. Someone, someone, some lucky person is going to win a copy on Monday morning. 
So Judith, I wrote down this quote because I just loved it so much. This is in the beginning of your introduction. If you can bake a batch of brownies from a box mix, you are ready to start easy bread. That's right. We tried to make it as absolutely easy as possible. Like all in, the measuring is easy. The, the assembly is easy. The ingredients are easy. You know, everything about it is easy. So even, you know, if you are afraid of yeast, you could still make this bread and it'll turn out great. That is so wonderful. All right, let's see who's got, we've got, so we've got Debbie Loftus is here. Um, Kathleen Donovan got her copy in the mail last week. Can't make to make something. Yay. Um, Eric Ellis is here. Hey, Eric. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Y'all making me hungry. I've been looking at this book of bread. I'm starving. We've got um, Sherry Ann. She's saying, hey, from San Antonio. Jimmy Prophet, hey. you need this book. Y'all need this book. Y'all need to do something. Um, Jimmy works with the Old Mill in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee. And it's this historic old mill where they make these amazing um, flowers and grains. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're really super cool. All right. We've got Jocelyn here saying, who doesn't want to bake easy bread? That's right. <laughs> I know. I mean, it's really, you know, it's kind of funny because um, I don't, you, you've got, you've got gluten-free in here, right? But if it's like fat-free, gluten-free, whatever it is, like bread, it's like the, the when you think it's almost like the most primal food stuff that we consume. It is. It's it's comforting. And, and as you said, it can be gluten free, vegan. You know, it goes across this whole grain. It's like whatever you want to do, you can. It's the staff of life. And it's I did a bread book previous to this. It was Prairie Home Breads. And it got me thinking about home. And bread is all about being home and being settled because you have to have the right temperature to have the bread turn out. So you have to be settled to have bread. So it's it's a taste of home. No, it's true. It's true. Well, let's talk a little bit about this because you've got you've got whole grain, you've got seeded and filled. You do have gluten free breads. I mean, you really, but it's like your approach to this. Like, um, can we talk a little bit about your ten basic steps? Like, I thought that that was super smart. You just like really um, measure, mix, rise, use a refrigerate, form, rest, prep the oven, slash, slide, and bake. I mean, yeah. you really, you put it into the most simple terms for people. Yeah, it's it's like we tried to, to make sure that uh, at, at every point you got it right. So first of all, with measuring, you know, a lot of people just stick the cup in the uh, in the bag of flour and go that way. But that you're going to end up with for every cup of flour, you're going to end up with an extra ounce of flour and that could make your bread really heavy. So mm -hmm. you want to scoop from the bag and then put it into the cup, the measuring cup. And there you go. So one simple step, easy. You saved yourself a lot of grief. No, that's so smart. And it really, I think that people can be so intimidated by bread, but one of the things that we that you talk about is like proofing or not proofing. And there's been so many um, advancements made with instant yeast. Yeah. So it's uh this is a, it's a finer grain yeast and uh -huh. you can just add this right to the flour saves you a step with proofing. I, you know, you read all those recipes, traditional recipes, and they says that, you know, proof the yeast and it's going to look like sea foam or proof the yeast and it's going to look beige and it never looks that way it always looks like sludge or it looks gray and you think oh i i've i've messed this up right from the beginning so this way it takes uh, away that that worry that you might have and it makes it all turn out no that's so cool and i love so y'all the other thing is is that you've got instructions like people can make this dough and and am i, am I remembering right that you write that you can leave a dough in the refrigerator for up to nine days yeah. So you can make, you know, there are a lot of people with busy lives. They like to prep all their food on Sunday. I, I am not one of those, but, but I get that. I, I, aspire, I aspire. Yeah. I don't want to get to Tuesday and think I don't want to have tacos, you know? So, uh, but a lot of people do. And this is, you can make a batch of this dough, have it in your refrigerator, and then you could use it all week long or which is even better. Uh, if you don't use it up by the, by the nine days, you can, uh, put part of it, wrap it in um, parchment paper, put it in a freezer bag and freeze it for up to three months, let it thaw and then use it again. Wow. So, okay. So let me ask you a question there. So like, okay, so I've got the dough and of course it's going to, it's going to continue to rise in the refrigerator over the nine days. Do people need to punch it down? 
No, it, 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 it just kind of stays up at the top of the bowl. Once it's, it goes up to the top of the bowl, it doesn't dome. It doesn't do any of that. Okay. That's it, good to know. That means, that, that means, y'all, that means that she's got her proportions right. That's what that means. That's yeah. what that means. <laughs> and, and, you know, it, it only does this thing when you put it in the oven and then the high heat makes it rise. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we, so we can put the dough in and leave it for nine days. And then, okay. So I've got, it's the end of the week. And I need to I need to freeze this. Um, how do you suggest freezing that dough, for example? I scoop it out of the bowl and and uh, I put it on a piece of parchment paper. Uh -huh. I fold up the parchment paper so it's it's easy to handle and put it in a, a you know gallon sized freezer bag. And then I I want to mark it because I had can sometimes have strange things in my freezer that if I didn't mark, I think what is this? Uh, <laughs> no, I get that. I can yeah. do that. Well, we have got a ton of people here. So let's see. Um, let's we got okay, yay, we got a yay, gluten-free. Thanks, Judy. And Jocelyn says staff of life, yay. And then Lynn has got a, a heart, and then um Jimmy Prophet takes a bread of life to bread for life. That's exactly right. So hey, y'all, if y'all have any questions, this is the this is the time to answer them. Um, so uh let's see, what else can we talk about? So what are some of the breads? So what are some of the other breads that you feature? I see this, you've got this beautiful flat bread in front of you. So let's talk about yeah. some different breads. Yeah, there's a, well, I'll first show you the flat bread that's, that's in the book. I've got the place marked with the dough scraper. So yeah. this is, so one of the things about, this is a flat bread with caramelized onion and brie. And this uses. Yum. That looks so good. Yeah, this just uses a, a fourth of the dough, but this uh, this flatbread uses half of a half of the quantity of dough, and this is enough for 16 people as an appetizer. Uh, I do this all the time in cooking classes, and uh, it can serve eight if you're going to have this as a main part of your meal with like a salad or a bowl of soup, uh, or if you've got hungry teenagers that come home, it, it can serve four. So it just depends on the level of, uh, of hunger. Um, but it, this, this book starts off with bowls and, and um, baguettes that you make with just four ingredients. In every chapter, you add a little something. So you may add a different liquid. Uh, you may add a puree of some kind. There's a great recipe for pumpkin pull-aparts or uh, wow. butternut squash pull-aparts. Uh, you you every you go to gluten free you go to whole grain um, by the end of the book you're making brioche and bagels and croissants oh my and, god well that sounds like a perfect evolution and then and so many of these are more of the no need method right because of the amount of liquid right yeah it's all uh, and what i like about this dough is it's it's uh, no need dough is floppier it's not like a poodle it's more like a labrador retriever who just you know, uh, wants to be your friend and you, you kind of have to, you, you kind of gather the dough. It's not so much you shape it. It's, it's, you sort of gather it and it's more loosely formed, but it's, it's really, and it has a really great feel. It feels like a baby skin, or if you had the kind of grandmother I did, it feels like, you know, this part. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Lisa used to call those Hadassah wings, which I, that's a whole other thing. So, okay. <laughs> we'll let the copy of the book for me. Okay. I want y'all to, I'm sorry about having to instruct you to do that. So y'all, y'all, all that are watching please go to my instagram feed and if you like me that's awesome thank you for liking me but if you don't like judith i want you to like her too y'all enter to win you can you can tag as many people as you want you can enter as many times as you want and we will get a, a we will get a copy in the mail to you i promise so and then does anyone have any um does anybody have any questions for judith about making bread or do you have any um any sort of bread making challenges or what if you know bread making like took off this past year? Do you what is that? Did you start this book before that project though? Before that happened, did you start this project? Yeah, I started it be before then, but it was very timely. There's actually also I know people were into making sourdough bread during the pandemic, and there's a slow rise chapter in here that you can get the that that gives you that honeycomb crumb and the, mm -hmm. the you know increased flavor that you, if you take more time, you get benefits from that too. So. No, yeah. sure. Well, I would ask you that about like the nine day, like if I do make that dough and leave it in the nine day and it rises to the top of the bowl. I mean, as it's sort of sitting in there, 
Is it sort of like in hibernation or, or do you yeah, it's, like it's, kind of like, it's kind of like hibernation. Uh, you know, the cold makes the yeast kind of just, you know, like, like I do in the cold. I just, <laughs> I don't want to move. Yeah. So, but it's it's heat that really activates yeast. So uh, so yeah, if you keep it in the refrigerator, uh, it'll stay in the bowl. It's not gonna. I always think of those old classic Lucy and Ethel. You know where Lucy and Ethel are trying to bake bread and it's going all over the place. It's not gonna happen in your refrigerator. No, that has definitely happened to me before. Let's see if we got any. Okay, so we've got um, so we got two questions. So. Um, Trishula, can you talk about sourdough? So let's talk a little bit about sourdoughs. And, and if you don't mind, um, if we can explain that a little bit for those that those folks that aren't as familiar with what a sourdough is. Like, where sure. Where does that come from? Uh, sourdough, you can make your own sourdough starter at home. Uh, I did that for another project. This is easy bread. So you would use sourdough starter that somebody else had started because that's easy. Yeah. But you can make your own at home. You you uh, have a slurry of, uh, of flour and water. And usually you put in a, a bunch of organic grapes or some kind of mm -hmm. organic fruit. Mm -hmm. And you just sort of cover that loosely. And what you're doing is attracting the good bacteria in the air because it's you're fermenting. It's a fermented yeast. Yeah. So uh, and then after that, you use the the uh, you have to feed that sourdough starter. And and um, and so that's the basis of your bread. So it's a natural sort of yeast. But I love this book, Easy Bread, because I have to tell you, like I've I've done sourdough. I've 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 I, you know I've had sourdoughs like various times through my life, and it's like a pet. I mean, you it have is. to care of it. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's worse than a house plant, frankly. Right? <laughs> you know, it's in the refrigerator, at least a house plant is like out there dying right in front of your eyes. Yeah, in the refrigerator, if it gets behind the milk or behind the V8 or behind the mayonnaise. The next thing you know, if you got this like, you know, dead starter, which is a yeah. non starter, right? So yeah. easy bread is all about easy bread, right? Yeah. You're, you're, you're but, using this instant rise and it's, yeah. it's good to go. But you could make a sourdough starter and use it and, and freeze the part that that uh, you don't want to use. And then it goes into hibernation. It, you know, mm -hmm. I have a sourdough starter in my freezer uh, in the basement that I've had in there for years and I can take it out and it, it just comes too. So uh, that's uh, wonderful. That's, yeah. that's that is a great tip. When everyone started making um, sourdough last year. I decided to go a different fermentation route and I started doing kombucha. So Ooh, there, yeah. I think it's fascinating how um, our sequester due to COVID like wound up with people getting in the kitchen. So this is, yeah. awesome. and so many people learned about like loving to make bread. So hopefully this will bode well for your book. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. So yeah, yeah. well, um, will you do, will you show us what you, um, what you're doing and then i'm going to add um, so jimmy let's see jimmy perfect i need to free some okay there okay so will you show us the flatbread that you have in front of you sure this this is uh i'll hold this up this is uh, a bonus recipe this recipe isn't actually in the book although the artisan dough recipe is but this okay. is to let you know that uh, this most of the recipes in this book are basically templates or blueprints and you can modify these and change these up depending on the season and your ingredients. So uh, I showed you the flatbread with caramelized onion and brie before, and this is a flatbread, a sheet pan flatbread with pesto, my cherry tomatoes from my garden, pesto oh. that, that's from my garden. I wish I could say that the mozzarella cheese was from my herd of buff water buffalo, but <laughs> it's from the store. So, uh, uh, so anyway, uh, and I'm going to show you how to make the dough, and it is really easy. But if you miss okay. a step, you're you're in trouble. So you just need you. I I like a Danish dough whisk. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. It's it's uh, it mixes dough and it scrapes the sides of the bowl at the same time. You can conduct an orchestra with this. My you know. mama got me one of those. I yeah. mama who was watching. I love those things. If y'all don't yeah. have one, I've got a link on my side. Those are those are incredible. It's one of my favorite ones. And then it also helps if you have an instant read thermometer. I, this is just the grocery store kind. Okay. And what you do with this, if you're just starting off and you're not sure what lukewarm is, you can test the temperature of your water. Okay. And if it's 130 degrees or less, it's lukewarm. Or you could just do the easy way and add half hot, half cold, and you got lukewarm. There you go. 
And with the, it hard, right? Yeah. And if you're making a loaf of bread and, and you know, traditional recipes say thump it, tap it, do all this stuff. But uh, it, if you don't know what it's supposed to sound like, it's supposed to sound hollow, but is that really hollow? You don't know. So you take the temperature of your bread and if it registers 190 degrees Fahrenheit, it's done. So yeah. it's, it's easy. It's so, all science. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. There's a whole lot. There's a lot of mystery to it. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's, it's wrapped up in spirituality on some levels, I think, because it's just this, this holy process of feeding ourselves and the staff of life. But there's some stuff that's science. So good for yes. you for pointing out the 190, 190 Fahrenheit and you're done. Yeah. And you're done. And that's why you don't have to worry about this. You know, we're t trying to make this enjoyable and something that you're going to do often because it works and, and you're successful. So, uh, so I'm going to, I've got uh, six and a half cups of, I'm using bread flour today, but you can use all purpose if you want. Okay. Um, I like to use, because I, I live in Kansas, so I like to use uh, uh, Stanford County Mills flour or nice. uh, Hudson cream flour. Uh, I actually got to go down to uh, uh, do a story on the wheat, Kansas wheat harvest quite a few years ago for Severe magazine. And I got to go to Stafford County Mills and see how, you know, the, the wheat is harvested and then it's stored and then it's, it's, it's got to be stored for a couple months before it's ground and, and, uh, and it's milled into flour. It was the whole process. It was fascinating. That's so cool. Okay. So tell us what you're adding now. You've got, right, I'm adding uh, salt. salt sorry. You can see if you missed a step, you'd be, if you miss the salt and the salt doesn't do anything for the rising of the bread. It just is there for the flavor. So right. a lot of people think salt rising bread is salt rises it and it's not. Um, and uh, this is instant or bread machine yeast. And okay. this is a finer granule and you just add this. I'm going to stir with just the dry ingredients together. That's pretty easy. And then uh, I could take the temperature of my water if I'm not sure it's lukewarm, but I don't have to do that because it's lukewarm. And uh, you just pour the water in. And this is gonna make a really shaggy dough. It, it will seem like this, this can't possibly be how it's supposed to look, but it is. So, <laughs> And I try to wear dark things. So if I get flour on myself, you can really see it a lot better. So, <laughs> I often so, wear dark, dark when I make yeah. it. So this is, it's like making brownies. You're just going to, uh, you can count the number of strokes. Usually I think it's 40 something for, for a, a batch of brownies. But what you're trying to do is just get the, the dough mixed together. And as you can see, it is very shaggy and our, our tool is kind of going around the sides of the bowl. And this isn't gonna look very promising at first, but I can assure you, and there are photos in the book of this, cause so you yeah. can see what the dough is supposed to look like when it's, when it's risen. So I'm just gonna give this a couple more stirs. Yeah, look at, I'm gonna show them some pictures. I don't have the book with me, but I've got the PDF, but look at that. That is an easy, look at that bowl of bread. Oh my gosh, so delicious looking. Yeah, so you can see this is, it's pretty shaggy. Shaggy it's mat. Like traditional dough. Yeah. Um, but what you'll do, uh, you'll take out, of course, you're not going to wrap this up with the Danish dough is, but you'll put put uh, plastic wrap over the top of this and just put it on your kitchen counter for two hours and it will even out, it, the flour will absorb the water. It'll rise to the top of the bowl. It'll just be flat, but sort of creamy, sort of like sea foamy on the top. And then you'll know it's good to go. Wow. Okay. And then do I need to, are we, when that gets to that stage, do we, do we divide it? Is it the whole thing? Is that that flatbread or, and y'all, y'all, yeah. we're going to have that. We're going to share this recipe. So then yeah. do you need to roll it out or how does this next? What's yeah. The next? You, uh, what, what I like to do is uh, I like to just turn the whole thing out onto a floured surface and then okay. cut it into a half if I'm going to use a half or a fourth if I'm going to use a fourth, okay. put the rest back in the bowl, cover it up, put it in the refrigerator, and then use what it is. A fourth of this dough will make a baguette. So you can make four baguettes with this whole thing. It'll make two batards. Uh, it'll make two large flatbreads. It'll make four uh, small flatbreads, and it'll make probably, you know, 48 rolls. So 
that's yeah. genius. And I love yeah. the, and, and um and I love the fact that you can keep it. So y'all, if y'all are just coming in, we're here with Judith Fertig, and she's got she we're on Cupix with Virginia today. We've got easy bread and. If you can bake a batch of brownies from a box mix, you are ready to start easy bread. I just think that that is it because um, people just get so scared of cooking and it's, you know, if you, if most of the time you're not going to kill anybody, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. If you bake this, you just love no, not much chance of killing somebody. So, right. So right. Good. <laughs> right. So, um, and how many recipes are in the book? Let's talk a little bit about that because I really think that people need to check this book out. Yeah, it's 100 recipes. And what's really great is that there are lots of photographs. So this is a hazelnut swirl loaf. So this starts off just sort of like our flatbread that you put a hazelnut and chocolate, spread it on, and then you roll it up on a long side and it becomes a batard with a swirled filling. And this is a great breakfast spread or you could do this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I mean, yeah. the photographs are, are glorious, Judith. I mean, they're absolutely beautiful. So y'all, this is published by Robert Rose Books. Um, let's talk a little bit about where people can go. Okay. So what, what, two things, I got two things. So we're going to, we've got that bread, you're going to divide it. And then once you press it out into that flatbread shape and top it, is it ready to go in the oven again? Or do you need a second rise? It, it's ready to go in the oven. So, wow. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. So, ready to go. So, uh, so this is, you know, it's a, it's a great uh, saving dish to make if you've got unexpected company or if, if you think, what am I going to make for dinner tonight? I've got a little bit of this. I've got a little bit of that, but I got some dough in the refrigerator. You know, you, it, it makes your life easy. So it's easy bread, but it makes your life easy. No, that's true. That's true. Um, all right. So, and if people want to get your book, so it's available, of course, on all the big, the big sites, Amazon and BN and want to encourage everybody to go to um, indie, uh, indie.org and IndieBound to check out their local. But if someone wants to order it from you and um, in Kansas City, you told me Rainy Day Books. Rainy Day Books and Prides, P-R-Y-D-E, apostrophe, yes, it's a kitchen shop. And they, you know, you could probably get your Danish doughs there too. You could, they could send you the whole thing. So the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I can't, but okay, well, let's see, let's see. We've got, oh, we've got mama. There's mama. Hello, mama's watching. <laughs> hey, I do this missing tool. I tell you she likes the, um, I tell you she likes the, uh, she loved that tool. And yeah. someone, Eric, who's a college buddy, teasing me about my uh, Southern accent. So let's see what else is happening. <laughs> like the cinnamon roll. So I have five questions to ask you, sort of five, my five cookbooks with Virginia questions. Are you ready to do it? I'm ready. This will be okay. great. Good. Yay. Um, all right. So, you know, it sounds like you, you started with a memory, but I just wanted to ask you, like, is there another food memory? Is there a food memory in this book that's sort of specific to this to your bread book, right? Is there a, is there something that's sort of wrapped up in this book that's a food memory for you? Uh, yeah, I wish I could say that uh, my mom and my grandma were big bread bakers, but but they weren't. Uh, but I worked at a mom and pop bakery. That was my first job uh, in high school, and so that that colored a lot of different things. So I remember you had to be there at like six o'clock on a Saturday morning. And I thought I was going to be in there baking and everything, but I was scrubbing the frosting off the cinnamon roll case and, you know, wrapping up things in those boxes with the string. And, and oh, uh, that's so nice. Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. A bakery's on, a bakery's done practically by 6 a.m., right? Yeah. My friends are oh, bakers yeah. like four o'clock at four o'clock wake up calls. Yeah. All right. So we've seen the Danish dough whisk. Is that your favorite kitchen tool? Or do it you is. Other, yeah. Okay. It's my favorite. So I, I think the, the more I go along, the less gadgety I am. I like something that will do several different things, not just one thing. Although I do love a good garlic press. Um, ah, it true, yeah. true. It took me a long time to be converted to the garlic press side, but I think I am now. Um, all right, so, uh, so we've got your favorite cooking tool. All right, this is the next one. Sour, salty, bitter, sweet, or savory? Like what's your go-to flavor? Uh, for drinks, it's sour. Um, for I, I love bread, and that some it falls sort of savory and salty. It's more mellow. So I'm a I'm a big bread person, and I I have to watch how much I make because you know I'm one of these people that you know bread is warm and you smell it and you just want you know 
you you want a couple of slices. You don't want no, to just no, no. sour is good. Sour is good, and it's like that. I, I love um, I love sour things and fermented and bread and all that. There's definitely that that undertone of sour. Um, this is another question that I love asking. So there's so much content, right? There's live streams and and all that. Like, who are the some of the people that you like to watch uh, for inspiration? I mean, who's someone? Whether it's TV or on your phone. Who is someone that you like to watch for inspiration? Uh, I actually like to watch uh, when I do watch. And I, you know, for me, the content sometimes is more like game showy and I'm, I'm not interested in that. Uh, but I love the whole ambience of, of Ina Garten, especially in her new kitchen studio. I just, I, it's a whole lifestyle thing that, that I really like. She's and uh, her recipes are great. She, yeah, her recipes are great. They always work. She's comfortable. She, there's not a whole lot of, it's not gadgety or like you said, game show or people cooking with their hand tied behind their back. I yeah. I'm, not, I'm not keen on that. So, yeah. and then my next question is other than your own, other than this beautiful book, Easy Bread, who are some of the people that you like to read? What was the last cookbook you read other than your own? Well, I've been uh, I've been working on a kind of a personal essay. It's it's like I like to write and work out a different muscle group, you know. Uh, uh -huh. So uh, in doing that, I had to revisit uh, Laurie Colwyn's Home Cooking and More Home Cooking, and I uh, she was sort of I felt like I've never met her, but I felt like she was my friend in the kitchen. Uh -huh. And when she passed away suddenly, I was I was bereft, uh -huh. and I thought that's the power of what you feeling like you've got somebody with you in the kitchen. You, it's your companion. Oh so who's chopping onions? You got it. Wow. Oh my gosh. Well, Judith, I am so excited. Hold up your book for me one more time. Oh, yeah. Yay. So y'all, Easy Bread, super beautiful, beautiful new book by Judith Ferdig. Judith, thank you so much for being on Cookbooks with Virginia today. Thank you so much, Virginia. This is great. Oh my gosh. Oh, yes. Y'all, oh my gosh, it's so much fun. I love it. I just love this book. And and I, like I said, there was a shipping issue and I looked at it in a PDF and I cannot wait to hold this hot little book in my hand and bake some easy bread. So um, please join me on Fridays at 1130. Thank you so much for Dita for uh, being a guest on today. Y'all head to Instagram and sign up to enter to win a free copy of the book. Um, stay safe and happy Labor Day weekend. All right. Bye-bye now. Bye-bye, y'all.